I'm not a queen. And I'm not anywhere near royalty. So, who am I? I'm the hot process peasant. Give me a chance, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. Thanks. Hello everybody, Soap Peasant here to bring you a charcoal soap today. Charcoal and witch hazel. And I've got my oils and butters in the crock pot. And I've got canola oil, castor oil, coconut oil, lard, coconut butter, olive oil, palm kernel oil flakes, uh, palm oil, shea butter and beef tallow so all of that is in here and I'm making a three pound loaf today instead of my usual four so I'm going to plug this in because I almost forgot and uh, crank it on and get it melted down and then come back and add the lye water so hang in there okay I've got my oils going. Let's get it over a little bit. And they are melted and 157.2. My lye water is 198 to 197. So it's going to cool down a little bit more. And the, what was I going to say? Uh -huh. For the lye water, I have chamomile tea and aloe vera juice. And so that's what I dissolved the lye into. And it's all dissolved. I'm just waiting for it to cool down a little bit so it's more the same temperature of the oils. 192.7. So I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit more and then bring it back in when it's added. Both of the things are equal in temperature within just a few degrees so I'm gonna go ahead first I'm going to put the clay and stuff in uh, what is it sea salt bentonite clay I usually have some kind of bubbles get that mixed in there this one I don't like this uh, crock pot as much well I shouldn't say that but it's just it provides difficulties that because of the amount of soap I'm making three pounds. See, this is why you should wear safety gloves because of this right here. If that had been my bare hand, that would have been a really bad problem. And I have the floor covered beneath me, and I have my counters covered. But boy, if I'd have had the lie in there, that would have been in bare hands. That would have been bad. Let me get this oatmeal gel going in here. Let me see. Okay. I think that's all mixed in pretty good and I don't feel any grit from the sea salt in the bottom either. Let's give it a little bit more the lye water. Ooh, so much for slowly. I'm not left handed so I have all kinds of issues <laughs> trying to use my left hand for things that go smoothly with my right. Now I'm going to just blend it a little see if I can get it to uh, some sort of trace. Before I get too much further into trace, I'm going to heat up the coconut milk. It's a good thing this is charcoal soap because this color is super funky and it's fixing to get even weirder because I'm going to add coconut milk that has mango and 
passion fruit, I think it said, or something weird in it. But I want to add it hot. Rats. I gotta get that out. And so here we go with my left hand again. Oh boy. Alright, I'm gonna add it slowly. Oh yeah, see it's changing to a very, very strange color. This is part of the um, water discount that I did with the rye, so I'm adding it back in at this stage. Poor cheap stick blender, it's just groaning. You promised not to overwork me. This is, we may have just the slightest chance of a volcano. This is pretty thick. This is pretty thick. Alright, I'm going to take this off. Something very magical happens when you turn on the camera. And you can count on it to be discolored, uneven, <laughs> uh, strange things happening to it. It looks like very, very thick pudding, which is alright. That's not so very unusual at all. It's just that, uh, well, the bentonite clay, you know, has a tendency to act kind of weird, too. I am going to cover it, and I'm going to give it, let's say, three minutes. I'm going to give it three minutes on the timer and then see what's going on with it. It's pretty hot. Soap volcano. Yep, soap volcano. And so I'm whisking it down. I mean from one blink to the next, there it goes. It's volcanoing up and I'm going, Wah! trying to get to it. Oh, yee. All right, let's see how hot that is. 210, almost 211, so that's why. Pretty hot stuff. Oh my goodness. I had to grab it so fast, I grabbed my after the cook uh, whisk because I had to do something quick, really quick. So I'm going to have to switch. And it looks like it's kind of moving again, doesn't it? I think so. Perhaps I should whisk some more. Oh, yeah, yeah. I get so thirsty when I'm making soap. I think it's because I know I can't reach for anything to drink because I can't take my eyes off this. And I've got my safety gloves on. This is getting pretty thick. I think that it's going to go right to Vaseline stage because it's, oh, it's volcano again. Okay, never mind. It's going to volcano some more. I think I'm going to turn it down. I'd like to take it out of the heating element as soon as I can, but I can't at the moment because I don't have an extra set of hands to do it. I'm going to turn it off because it's going to Vaseline stage right here before our very eyes with a little elbow grease. That's the other ingredient I didn't mention. Elbow grease. <laughs> Lots of that. Alright, let me see if it'll sit still for a dang minute. Go. Oh. Alright. Golly. Unbelie. Every single time something different happens. Every time. It is definitely Vaseline stage. It's kind of jelly, kind of crackly, but it doesn't look like potatoes. Doesn't look like applesauce. It's just very... That, that happened really fast. That literally happened in four minutes. So, that's a new record. That's a new record. It's not a volcano record. I've had three, three total separations, two volcanoes, in uh, two separate volcanoes. Not, not just like it rose back up as it did just now, but really 
Um, so this was not this was not the most challenging one, but interesting nevertheless. And the the batter is pretty pretty stinking hot. Since I am sure that it has gone through to the uh, Vaseline stage, I'm going to fight with this. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's yeah, forget it. I'm going to cover it, and I'm going to get my junk uh, warmed up and take this out of the element, and then we'll see what we can do about adding all the goodies. Hang in there with me. Whew, I'm kind of rattled. All right. It has definitely reached the Vaseline stage, and it's very translucent and, and everything. It's, it's still pretty, it feels pretty loose and decent. Okay, now I'm going to add the sugar and aloe vera juice which I warmed up so that I'm not adding something cold into something that's really still hot and that would make it seize up and so I warmed that up this is not the whisk I wanted to use but that's alright it's just a little more effort until it gets completely loosened up because it's so bendy it's kind of meow 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 so and I'm going to grab the sodium lactate. Okay, here's the sodium lactate, which will um, help to harden up the bar some. And I already put sea salt in there, but I add sodium lactate also because I do add a lot of liquid and stuff back to it. Um, and then there's a couple of things that I add that I don't take out of the water at the beginning. For instance, the sodium lactate and uh, the honey and aloe that I add and the yogurt and sugar water, stuff like that. It's always a balancing act between too hot, too cool. If it's too hot, you can't add stuff because it'll scorch it. If it's too cool, then you've got a bar of soap with a spatula sticking out of it like that, a soap pop. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not what I'm going for. Not today, anyway. Let's see, 188.6, that's still pretty hot. All right, I'm going to heat up the witch hazel and aloe vera, and then we'll put that in. Hang in there with me. We're, we're moving along. Okay, this is still pretty hot. 181.2. This is just not wanting to cool down at all. So, <laughs> I'm not helping it cool down any, I suppose, but I am helping it to stay fluid by adding witch hazel and aloe vera. This I did discount from the original water amount, and so it's just going back in. It's what it was going to have originally and I'm just separating those amounts out and putting them in at different stages. That's the only difference. The water amount is the same eventually, or the liquid amount I should say, is the same eventually. It just depends on when you add it. This is a little bit of a, a hunch that I've been working on for just a couple of weeks. Um, tinkering with the idea, not actually testing it, but just tinkering with the idea that I could use witch hazel. I found a couple of people that had done it and had mixed results, and so I thought, well, mixed results. Let's do this thing. Let's try it. <laughs> I don't like a surefire thing. So, there we go. Now all of that witch hazel is in there. It's just a matter of getting it good and mixed in. And then I'm going to take the temperature. 163.9. I am going to add my super fat, which is, dang, what's that? Hang on. I guess that, ooh, that's a clump of, how would there be a clump of uh, bentonite in there? Bentonite acts weird. It's weird. Unless you are ready for somewhat of a roller coaster. 
go with kaolin or a french green clay or something like that because bentonite just acts very strangely sometimes you never know sometimes it behaves perfectly and sometimes it's the kid that gets sent to the principal's office every five minutes so let's see all right this is melted cocoa butter and it's also uh, wheat germ wool so I've got both of those in there oh it's nice and soft it's really nice and soft this is nice very nice I'm gonna go ahead and add the honey and aloe which has been warmed up I really like this uh, the feel of it so far it, it seems like it feels pretty good nice I like that last thing I'm going to add the Greek yogurt then I'm going to cover it up then I'm going to come back and add the fragrance oil which is fresh shave from Wholesale Supplies Plus get it covered so I don't lose all that moisture that I just put back in there Oh boy, it's hot in here. Whew, dang. All right, I'm gonna put a little piece of plastic over it. Like that. Come on, just do it. There. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for five minutes and then we'll add the fragrance and divide it into black and gold. Hang with me. Boy, I do that a lot. <sighs> Great. Meanwhile, back at the peasant's place, I forgot again, started separating the batter, forgot the stinking scent. I went, oh, how many times? <sighs> do I have to forget the same thing? Oh, all right. Anyway, it's still it's still nice and fluid, and let's see if it stays that way after this. Oh, one, two, three. Here it goes, all in. What a dumb bunny trick. Honestly, I don't know what it is. It's sitting right there in front of my face each time. I remind myself. I ask you guys to remind me, and I still forget it all the time. All right, I'm gonna separate out. That's not the soap, that's the water cooler. I'm gonna separate this out and make it gold. I think that's too much for the little mold. We'll see. Yep, right here. And put the gold in and hope that it's gold enough. Let's see. All right, almost got all of it stir it up and see how it looks. I'm trying to decide. I do this every time. Should I or shouldn't I do it this way? Oh, all the decisions and the quandaries of life. All right, unless it's just my eyes, it still looks yellow and not gold. But that's okay. That's okay. Because things always tend to turn out just a whole little whole lot different than I thought. And now for the black. I hope that I have something is wrong here. Something is very very wrong. And I'm not exactly sure what, <coughs> excuse me, I've got terrible allergies. I'm not sure what is wrong, but I just don't think this is all going to fit in there. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to stir it up and get it going in there. Why? this is looking like a big mess. So I haven't lost my heat, that's for dang sure, but I don't want to lose my moisture because of the heat and because of how long I've had it uncovered. Just all of that. All of that complicated stuff. Complicating factors. Trying to whisk with a 
ladle. Ay, ay, ay. This is what peasant soaping is all about. Is when you don't have what you need and so you just you wing it. You cross your fingers, you try something else, you hope it works out. Okay. The next video I am going to begin with my measuring because I got halfway through measuring the butters and the oils and I thought man I should have taped this so all right what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get a somewhat uneven base here and then put the gold on it because I want it to look kind of mica lineish but it's got to kind of be even, but somewhat, <laughs> ooh, that was nice, somewhat at a slant, let me see, I'll stick this, no, that's not going to work, I'll stick this right there, okay, oh my gosh, I've got this black all over me, okay, Obviously, I have, there's some kind of really interesting issue here. I am going to do just the faintest little line here, if I can. I'm going to try to be, oop, try to be gentle with the line. Should have used a little sifter, but just... Just winging it all over the place. Okay, now I'm going to put some more of the charcoal in. Right on top. Oh, big mica poof. Hang on. i got to get finished making a mess here. Oh, oh my gosh, this is going everywhere. Shoot. Okay, well I let this one sit so I can kind of make the top look neat. I'm gonna get another mold. Okay, I'm gonna try something different. If I can get some of this off me, because now it's just everywhere. I think for this one, I'm gonna do somewhat of a, a camo drop. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do some drops, just kind of random drops here and there. And then I'm going to take the gold and do some drops, make a little mess. You wouldn't know it's me if I didn't make a mess, so that's how you know. If it's questionable how it's going to turn out, if the final result is not exactly what I envisioned or promised, we're in the right channel. So many hours of preparation and work and measuring and waiting and everything it all comes down to actually doing it and then you get weird kind of stuff happening which is really from bad planning I suppose more than anything else that's probably just about the size of it just bad planning Now I'm gonna take that down. I'm gonna take this. Make sure you can see well. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna go ooh. Swirl, 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 swirl this way. And then I turn this way. Go swirl, 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 swirl this way. Like that. I'll do a oops. A little bit of a thingy right here. Alright. This one is done. Now, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to try to shape it kind of like like coal, although it looks pretty, ooh, it's still really hot. I have another idea that I think I just may do. I like how it's kind of crinkling and crackling on the top. It's going to look good. 
The question is, when do you stop? <laughs> That's everybody's dilemma. This is going to be a smaller one. So what, what in the world? These must hold two pounds. Oh, well. Well, thank you for hanging in there with me. Here's, ooh, here's the charcoal soap, which, oh, you know what? I did it again. Oh, I was going to put the hanger in it. Oh, I can't. Oh, this doesn't even fit. You know? Oh, my goodness. I, okay. Out of absolute, ooh, God, I don't recommend this at all. But I'm going to, I know I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to try to go in at an angle, and I'm going to try to do a swirl underneath this surface that I just got the way I wanted it. Now I'm going to try to lift it back out, give it a little tap, and then I'm going to go in this side the same way, all the way to that corner, and try to swirl without ruining the top. Oh my goodness, I just... I have done all the damage that I could do, but we'll see what it looks like when you cut it open because that's where the magic is. So, thanks a lot, and I'll cut it up. Here is the uh, soap that I did. I let it sit for two days. I took it out of the mold after about four hours in the freezer, so I'm kind of got some rough edges right here. It looks it looks like the inside of a coal mine. It does. It looks really good. I like it. It's very crackly and crispy looking and it looks very uh, I don't know. Like you could take a pick to it, I guess. <laughs> Make sure it's flush. As flush as an uneven loaf of soap can be. Alright. Well, interesting. It smells like witch hazel. Anyway. Let's see. Mm. Still getting a little bit of a drag mark through it, but I let them sit, even though it's hot process and I can use it right away. I let it sit for a few weeks um, under a fan on a rack to to uh, dry out and absorb the rest of the, or evaporate rather, the rest of the moisture. And let's see what the next one looks like. It's a halfway decent swirl. Just halfway. Hmm. See a little wisp of gold there. And if the gold part were more gold and the swirl and there was more gold, I think it would look better. It looks a little bit incomplete up in here, I think, just because of that. But I'm anxious to see if the soap performs well because it does have a good bit of charcoal in it. Certainly an effective amount. There's that little bit that you can see and you can see a little hint of it right here. This one, meh. Not terribly interesting. Not terribly interesting at all. Oh boy. I like charcoal soap a lot, and I use it every day. I, I actually use several different of the soaps. My my favorite, hmm, that would be too hard to say, I think. Um, I don't know what my favorite is. That's a pretty alright swirl, I suppose. But I, I really like the, the charcoal soaps. I like glycerin charcoal soap and hot process. I'm I'm really super partial to the glycerin coffee soap, I suppose. This is a nice swirl. It does not look like a line of gold that you just found some terrific nuggets in. No, it does not. But am I cutting? Yes, I am. You know, if it were gold, it would just be kicking it. Now, here is the other one, the three-quarter loaf that I made. Um, because for some nutty 
but usual reason, I made some kind of error. I made too much soap batter. And so this is one and three quarters. <laughs> um, so we'll see what this one looks like. This one I did a different pattern. I did more of a kind of, I guess you'd call it a camo pattern, I suppose. Meh. That's all right. It's, it hasn't rocked my world or anything, but it's, it's all right. All right, let's see if it gets better. The last time I did sort of a random drop can oh wow too bad that this one is not full size you know what I'm gonna do for these I'm that's not bad either it's really not um, what I'm gonna do for these I think is I am going to cut them thicker so it's a chunky bar because it's so small man that's nice though Ooh wee I'm glad all right I'm gonna set that over there I want it to be a decent size. All right, let's see what it looks like. Anyway, the last time I did this sort of drop pattern, it looked like a quilt. It was so beautiful. And so I called it cookie blanket because it smelled like, it wasn't supposed to, but it smelled like cookies. It did, it smelled like, like shortbread cookies. That's pretty. That looks good. I like that. Looks like I've got one or two more cuts after this. I just never know. But that's part of the fun of it for me, I guess, is not knowing exactly what it's going to be like. It's, it's not so predictable that it's boring. It's certainly not boring. That is one thing it is not. But the most fun, I think, is when something comes out accidentally really good <laughs> like this. Sometimes I bevel my soaps, sometimes I don't. It just depends on how cleanly they came out, depends on what kind it is. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes they look better um, not beveled. I may do just a little bit of cleanup on the sides of these. But I don't think I will bevel them, and the degree to which I'm going to try to neaten them up is, is going to be minimal because I want it to look craggy like that. But you can see the difference in the height. It's, you know, it's, it's significant enough to, to notice. So what I did is just cut chunkier bars. Got to weigh them and see it, what the, the weight is on both of these but I just cut them different widths because to account for the height difference. I, I hope you liked it and if uh, if you did let me know and if you're interested in making some charcoal soap uh, I used uh, one teaspoon of activated charcoal per pound and so and and just a smidge of that black oxide so I really got a nice black out of that and the top did very well for looking coal like so I'm pretty happy with the recipe it has a lot of oils in it but I think it's going to be a really super good soap so if you liked the soaps let me know and tell me why you liked them and why you didn't like them and I am open to all ideas. Well, first, let's see. Let me get my wits together here. Gosh. So who am I? <laughs> I'm the hot process. Whatever the other word is. <laughs>